And then Charleston, you know, we had a real debate over those 10 days about whether or not to go do it. He didn't want to for the first half of the week. He, he was adamant against it. Um, what Why? those families for the same reason he'd been in, in 2013, you know, what's it going to change? How many more words can we find to describe uh, a massacre? You know, why do I have to go speaking after each one of these? What's it going to, what, what difference is it going to make? And I, I don't think he truly meant that. And he knew that this one was different. You know, this is a white supremacist going into a black church saying he wanted to start a race war uh, under the Confederate banner. Um, what really changed things was two days after the, after the attack. And, you know, it was really a terror attack. Um, all the families forgave the killer in open court on live television. And it was staggering. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't do that. And the president was so taken by it. And I really think it kind of changed the tone of the country just a little bit. You know, it seemed like people were carrying themselves a little bit differently than usual. That could just be because the, the massacre was so awful. Uh, but so was Newtown. And so, the you know, the president still hadn't decided on Monday of that week whether he was going to speak. But he, he, he said, you know what, I want to go down there and I want to hug those families. I don't I still don't want to talk. But if I do, um, that's what I want to talk about, the concept of grace. And, you know, what I was saying earlier is, you know, the, the president, it's his job to go be consular in chief. But he also saw a greater responsibility, which is in a situation like that, you eulogize the victims you're there to eulogize. But you also have to tell us, um, talk about what are our obligations now that those people are gone? You know, what are our responsibilities? How do we change? And, you know, with the Charleston speech was was such a complicated high wire act because, you're talking about, you know, guns, obviously, but you're talking about race and racism. You're talking about the Confederate flag. It's just, it felt to me like, because I just internalize all this stuff as a speechwriter, it felt to me like three different third rails all in the same speech. And then you have to braid them together in a typically Obama-esque fashion. And it was just, this was one of the speeches that was just right at the edge of my outer limits, uh, which is why, you know, he crossed out the last two pages and rewrote them himself. 